love him? Do you 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 love him? Oh, I love him. I love him. Yes, I love him. I love him. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Yes, I love him. 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 Will you praise him? 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 Oh, I praise him. 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 Yes, I praise him. 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 Do you believe him? 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 Oh, I believe him. I believe him with my heart, with my soul, with my mind. Oh, I believe him. 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 Will you trust him? Will you trust him? I can hear you. Yes. Will you trust him? 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 Oh, I trust him. I trust him. Yes, I trust him. I trust him. Oh, I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. Yes, I trust him. I trust him. I trust him, I trust him, I trust him, I trust him, I trust him. Will you serve him? 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 Oh, I serve him, 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 I serve him. I serve him, I serve him, yes, I serve him, 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 I serve him. Can we just lift our hands and bless the Lord tonight? Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you, Father. We praise you. Come on, let's praise him tonight. Let's offer to him the food of our lips with thanksgiving unto his name tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you tonight, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We just bless you for keeping us this day, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody just need to bless him tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. You know the Lord deserves the glory tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless the Lord tonight. We deserve the honor. It doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter how you feel tonight. God is worthy of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's say, yes, save my soul. Bless the Lord, saints. It's good to be in the house. Can we just move up as much as we can? Just occupy. There's not a lot of us, so it's good for us to just move up. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those of you who are here for our leadership discipleship, were you blessed? Amen. 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 That was awesome. I just thank God for his faithfulness in our lives because one of the things that the Lord really desires of this reformation is that we truly reflect Christ. Amen. And we have got to have a mind and a heart that whatever it takes for us to walk as Christ walked or walks, that it's okay. Amen. I know I'm certainly determined to do that because if we do not look like Christ, we won't even make it into heaven. Amen. And so primarily... We have to be, that Christ has got to be formed in us for the saving of our own souls and for us to be able to stand in the position of Christ and minister this gospel to the people of God, hallelujah, with the mind of Christ. Because when we really think about it, Jesus had a testimony that he never sinned, right? And he preached the gospel. He walked in the spirit of Christ. He has who he was. So everything that he is, everything that, that we're going to do for God has got to be in Christ. And so I thank God for discipleship. Hallelujah. We are not going anywhere without it. We're not going anywhere without it. And um, the fact that we even have our apostle in the island for us not to take advantage of that, those of us who are not taking advantage of it shall suffer for it. Amen. You know, what I, what I really mean by that is you're going to experience the deficiency. Amen. Whatever it takes for us to get here during this season, whatever it, it takes, and I'm just not one that think that we should stay home for the, for the broadcast too much because... There's so much distraction going on there. The phone is ringing. The dinner is being eaten. You have to get up and do this and do that. Amen. So that steadfastness, that even a mind to sit. What was that, Martha and Mary? Yeah. Jesus did not um, advocate halfway listening to him because that, who was it, Mary that was cooking? Uh, Martha. Martha. I imagine Martha was fixing the meal and probably came back out to listen a little and went back in to fix the meal. And she had a problem with Mary, who was fixing nothing. No, they were fixing for Jesus. Yet Jesus said, 
she's doing the better thing, sitting at my feet. Amen. You know, and I was reminded because even, even um, when it comes to even preparing meals, um, if we even have a, a have a function, I know Dr. Banks is very much against that. If you if find a way to cook that meal, but you don't miss the session, because God is speaking, God is speaking, and I really mean it when I say that those of us who have not taken advantage of our apostle in the island at this time will suffer for it by way of a deficiency, and that's real. I say that without reservations. But um, it's good for us to be here. Hallelujah. And uh, we're just going to give ourselves over now to what the Lord wants to say to us this evening. I would imagine that the weather is a part of the attendance here this evening. But nevertheless, let's put our hands together and give God all the glory. Give him all the praise. Let's honor him. Hallelujah, as we look to him even now. Glory to God. Amen. I've been working all day, saints, so I got to sit down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We had session after session. I think everybody wanted to make sure they got that last counseling session in before I left to the conference. Bless the Lord. Are you blessed? Amen. Glory to God. How many of you were here last night? Monday night. How many were here Monday night? Oh, okay, good. Were you blessed Monday night? Amen. God is working with us. He's working with us. I want to to go forward with the, the, with discipleship tonight um, because oftentimes we do a lot of teaching, but we don't always get an opportunity to get the feedback from the teaching. And if if you're hearing this message, one of the things that that um, that concerns me, <coughs> concerns me very deeply is not to be a teacher and, and to be a teacher and not produce fruit. You know, I, I wanna make sure that we produce the fruit, the message is producing the fruit uh, and that I'm not missing the mark in your lives, amen. And so, if I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is open the floor up. So if you have any issues with the message, anything about the message that you don't quite understand, this is the place that you ask. This is this is where we we open it up and 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 we look at that that principle or that particular issue, and we see what is really God saying there, because oftentimes you'll hear something that's being taught, and you, it'll bear witness with your spirit but you're not able to articulate it yourself. And we wanna bring that, bring this word to a place where you can articulate it. But it's not that you just heard it, but that you heard it and, and understand it enough to be able to regurgit, to, to regurgit in any situation um, um, and understand it with, clear, with clarity, to, to actually speak it with clarity. And that's what discipleship is all about, it's not, um, it's not feasible for us to just come to church and and not really know where we stand inside of the word. You know, discipleship shows us where we really stand inside of the word of God. Glory to God. Amen. I, I hope I didn't scare folks away. I mean, glory to God. Monday night we were packed out. Glory to God. <laughs> All my preachers stayed home. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Any questions or comments? 
We've been dealing with one with God. We've been dealing with we are one, tried, tested, manifested. All of those lessons point to one with God, every last one of them. They point to oneness with God. So if you, if, if, if you have any question regarding, regarding any of those lessons, amen, um, There was a, a a word that was taught, and I'm gonna I'm gonna teach this lesson again. Uh, we're gonna really get into it. What am, what are, what are my issues? Remember that remember that one. What what are my issues? And one of the one of the things that we we talked about in that was selective obedience. Does anybody remember what selective obedience is? I'm sorry. Obeying in part, okay, another, another example, that's true. Doing that which is convenient and not as challenging. Not as challenging to the flesh. I want to, uh, to, to, I want to explain something. I want to explain something about the flesh. I want us to understand. I want us to understand a certain principle that we sometimes take the take the meaning out of by our terminology. Um, for many many years, we we've used the terminology challenging to the flesh. I think I'm the one that introduced that to Bible teachers, challenging, challenging the flesh. Um, but in actuality, a son of God doesn't is when is the flesh challenged? Let me ask that question. When is the flesh actually challenged? When you don't want to deny yourself. When you don't want to deny yourself, flesh is challenged. When you don't want to deny yourself. Well, I guess, I guess you probably not walking in the spirit, or, or you to, but of course you're challenging, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, cause you, that's that's true. That's that's what you said in the lesson. Mm, I you did. Know, you have well, mm, yes, you have thank said you. you have said in the thank past you, um, session. Mm -hmm. that you you don't you have to um, want you have to be walking, not you have to not walk in the spirit. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It just clicked. It just clicked. Okay. Amen. It, and see, I want I, the reason why I want to go there is because it it leaves a, the wrong connotation. Bec the, um, the 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 connotation almost is that flesh rises up. You know. Uh, we got that connotation of flesh rising up, and then we, you know, we got to beat it down and all that. Um, but that's not really what really happens. You know, that's really not what happens. It, it, when I say that's not what happens, it's almost as if we're saying the flesh has a mind of its own, and it just, it just wants to do certain things, and then 
we got to wrestle with that, wrestle it back down. That's that's really not the the that's really not the way of the script. That's not what the script is really describing. But if we see it that way, then we'll always we'll always rehearse the term challenge the flesh. Uh, because we give preeminence to the flesh if you gotta challenge it. You're giving it preeminence. And it's almost as if we're two people, and we're not two people. The, the body belongs to us. We don't belong to the body. But when, you say, when, we, when we use terminologies like the challenging to the flesh, which, which we've used for years, um, we're actually giving a place for flesh that it doesn't have in the life of a son. Flesh doesn't have that, and that's why the Lord, the scriptures say, give no place, N give, make no provisions for the flesh. Doesn't it say that? It said make no provisions for the flesh. The flesh doesn't have a place of authority. It does not have a place of preeminence, but we give it to it in our mindset because our mind, our, our mind separates us from the flesh. It's, it, you know, we, we have made the flesh one person and then we're another that's really that's just not true the body belong the body is just the temple of the holy spirit and the, the spirit that we are gives nature to that to the to the flesh we have now become partakers of the divine nature hello we've become partakers of the divine nature and so we have to be very careful that we don't see, we don't, we don't see ourselves as two different people simply because we have a body. The body is under the, under submission of the son, who we really are. We are really sons of God, and our flesh is under submission to the authority of the son. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. There's a scripture that's coming to my mind that says the way of the transgressor is hard. So yes. when we talk about challenging the flesh, that's right. really what is happening. We have transgressed in our hearts or in our minds, and then it becomes hard. You know, one of the things that that um, that we have to see, and I, and I and I thank God for that scripture because He's it, when we talk about challenging the flesh being challenged, that's a struggle. Now you're talking about living inside of a struggle. And as he said, the way of a transgressor is what's hard. That's, that's who has a struggle. When you're transgressing or you, when, you wanna, when you decide to walk outside the boundaries of the faith, you're in transgression. And, and that way is hard because of who you really are. And there's always a struggle there. There, there there's, there's always a struggle there. But there's something else that I was, I was about to say um, relative to the, the mindset that we have about the flesh being in, in, being in authority, being, being separated. You know, we, we've made, we've made ourselves two different people. And that's what I, I want us to close that gap and see that the, the, the flesh is, is the temple that you live in, but it's your temple. It's the, you have the stewardship of that temple. You are the stewards over this, this body. And this body is only going to do what you tell it to do. And so what happens is that instead of the flesh rising up on its own, we are, we, we move into that wantonness, not because the flesh rises up and becomes wanton of the things in the world, but because we as sons look into the world and we desire something. That's why he said, if our eye be single, what is he talking about? What is the singleness of that eye? See, if your eye is single, then you don't look into the world and desire the things of the world. You desire the things of the spirit, the things that are, that are of God. But when you look into the world, when that son of God, that we really are, when we look at the world and we desire those things that are of the world, when we desire that thing that is of the world, that's when th we create. Because 
what, what, how is lust created? By our thinking, right? So we create lust in the flesh. So the flesh didn't do anything on its own. We allowed ourselves to desire. We desired something from the world, and our thoughts is what created the lust in the flesh. Now we want to blame the flesh for it. But the flesh said, I didn't do anything. You created this lust in me. Amen? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Just explain for me the, the scripture that tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. I'm going to hold you to take it out. Mortify. What does mortify mean? Mortify. It's already dead. It's already dead. Something that's mortified is already dead, isn't right. it? But you embalm it. Embalm it, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it, and, and, and embalming guarantees that it ain't coming back alive. <laughs> that's a guarantee. Glory to God. And, and, and so that, that when I mortify the, de the deeds of the flesh, what did I do before I got saved? What was the, the sins? What were the sins of my flesh before I got saved? What did I like to do? What were those transgressions? Now, if I mortify those things, I'll never do them again. Hmm? They are dead. I am dead. I'm a dead man. My flesh is dead relative to sin. It's dead to sin. That's what uh, Paul said to the church at Rome, that, w that the body is dead because of sin, right? It's dead. So the thing that keeps his flesh alive now is the Holy Spirit, right? That if you're a son of God, it's more than just the breath of life now that's keeping you alive. It's the Holy Ghost. Hello? Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is what keeps the flesh alive. And so, so now the body, if the body is dead because of sin, and he's saying now all of those deeds that you did before you died, before you died in Christ and was resurrected, mortify those deeds. Make sure they don't come back again. Make sure you do not do that thing again. Mortify it. When, when I, I remember when I first got saved, I went up to this coffin and tried to raise this dead man at, at a funeral. <laughs> sure, I didn't even know the man. Glory to God. But I was I had just got saved and I just thought I had all kind of power to walk the water and do everything. Glory to God. And I walked up the people were going around looking at the man in the coffin. And I just got up and went around and looked at him too. And when I got there, I said, Get up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it too loud because in case he didn't get up. But I'm standing up there looking down at the coffin. Rise in the name of Jesus. Rise. <laughs> and, uh, so when I told my girlfriend about it, <laughs> she said, boy, that was going to be a powerful resurrection, seeing as how he done been embalmed, all his guts been taken out. Glory to God. And he done been embalmed and everything. Glory to God. So he'd been mortified. His flesh had been mortified. Amen. That would have been a powerful, really a powerful resurrection. God would have had to take, find, go find his guts and put them back in him and all kinds of stuff. Glory to God. But he's saying in that, in that, in that verse, make sure that those things don't come back. Make sure that the deeds of the flesh don't come back again. Question. And that's the good point that, that um, Pastor Norman made, that, that we are, the transgressor's way is hard. That's what's hard. When you, when, when you walk inside of the spirit, there's no challenge to your flesh. Um, not from you. Not from you. When is the flesh challenged? Is it ever challenged? You're challenged. 
you are challenged. The enemy will challenge you. That's what temptation is. When Satan, when Satan approached Jesus uh, uh, in the wilderness, when Jesus was, 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 was sent out to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the devil was challenging him. The devil was challenging him, said, you know, God has given his angels charge of jump off this mountain. Or, it, you know, you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. You know, the, 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 the enemy was actually challenging Christ to do something that was, e that was unlawful for him to do. It was, it was totally unlawful. So that's, so that's when, that's where the challenge is. The challenge is when the enemy, when the enemy offers a, a type of temptation. Um, and also, I tell you another challenge too, when we're challenged. Uh, and it's and it, in the scriptures, the scriptures call this temptation as well, hardship. Hardships is a challenge to the sons. It's a challenge to the sons. And the reason why I say the sons and not the flesh is because the sons own the flesh. Flesh doesn't own the son. So hardships is a challenge to the sons of God. That is a challenge. That is a temptation. It's called a temptation. Hardships is called temptation in the scripture. Another temptation, another challenge is persecution. Persecution challenges the son of God. And what is the challenge? Why would it, why would it be a challenge? What, it, what is the challenge? To deny Christ. To deny Christ. That's the challenge. Persecution, hard, hardships, hard trials, distress, distressful situations. You, sometimes we get into situations that are very distressful, distressing situations. They're challenging the sun. And what happens is, and, and, and when, that, when that challenge comes, it always affects the flesh. That's what makes it a challenge from the enemy. He brings a challenge, and God will allow him to do this because he can't do it unless God allows him to. He brings that challenge, that challenge that he, that he knows, he knows that is, is, is going to affect flesh. Look at all the things that, that Job was challenged with, and, they, and he said that's, a, that's, that's an, a type of the church. So all those things that, that Job was challenged with affected his flesh. So even his, his, the loss of his children, the loss of his finances, the, 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 the uh, decline, the demise of his wife, you know, her, her spiritual demise. You know, everybody turning against him. It affected him. It affected his personage. And that's what, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to do that. Because if, if you didn't ever have challenges, there's a scripture in, um, in, a, in Psalms 119. Psalms, uh, from, from Psalms, uh, blah, blah, blah. Psalms, six to seven. Psalms 119, six, verse six to seven says, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Mm -hmm. Before I was afflicted, I I went astray before I had trials, these hard trials that affected my flesh. And verse 71 says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. And see, these are the, the, these are the principles that we don't really want to walk in. We don't really want to have to live through these. We don't want to live through this affliction stuff. You know, we don't, we don't want to live through this affliction thing. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I've kept thy word. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. But now have I kept thy word. Question. You had a question? Bless the Lord. Any questions? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. And it was good that I've been afflicted. Mm. Verse 75 says, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. I remember teaching that a long time ago, <laughs> that God is going to be faithful to afflict. So he's going to allow those trials to affect the flesh. He's going to allow that. I was, I was thinking last, uh, well, today, really, I was thinking on this, and I, I want to pass this on to you. And this is real. Not only is it coming from the scripture, but it's coming from ex experiential knowledge. When God thinks enough of you to confront you with where you are, with the deficiencies that you're walking in. When God sees those deficiencies and he says, if you continue to walk in this, you won't make it. So I'm going to confront you because the scripture tells us in Philippians that if we have any other mind, God would reveal it. Didn't he say that? He said he would reveal it to us. And, and, and this, the, the, the mercy there is that before you set foot in this church, whatever that deficiency is, that thing that you're walking in, that transgressing, that, 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 that causes you to transgress, you already know it. You already know. You already know your own spiritual location. If you are a son of God, that thing that you do wrong, you know it. You know that thing that you're doing wrong. You know that when you do wrong, your conscience says, now you shouldn't have done that. That's not righteousness. That's not righteous. Now, this is, this is my concern. This is, this is the concern that I've been dealing with all day here, is that when God, my knowledge of God and, and, and my relationship with God and my fellowship with God, all of it is tied, and tied up and tangled up inside of this. When God approaches us, and God love you enough, Ricky, to say, Ricky, you got a spirit of pride. And I can use you as this example because you don't have a spirit of pride. But if, 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 if he said to you, Ricky, you have a spirit of pride. And you need to change that. If God said that to you in here, he's already said it to you before you got here. Okay? Not only that, our own deeds speak to us. Our deeds speak to us. God speak to us inside of our own deeds. Have you ever done something and know that it was just wrong? Hmm? It was just wrong. But it was, it was just wrong. Now, my concern is that there are, are some that do things that are, that are wrong. And this is what I've seen in the church. There are people that, that do things that are wrong, but they live inside of that wrong. In other words, the deeds that they do that are wrong, have, they've done it so long until it's a part of them. It's a part of who they are. It's a part of their identity. I want to give you an example. And, and, and saints, if I, and when I give examples, it doesn't mean that I'm talking about anybody, okay? Okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> I just want to give you some examples. This, this is experiential knowledge. I've been doing this here a long time. You just got in here. Okay? We're talking almost 50 years of ministry right here, sitting in this chair. Okay? I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. And um, if God approaches you, and this is, this is my concern because, because I see it happening. 
I see it. I see what God is doing. God is, is being faithful. He's being faithful. And, and uh, when we have walked, when we walk in things that are not righteous, and we walk in them so long, they, it becomes just habit. It becomes who we are. You know, it's part of our, you know what it becomes? Personality even. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes character that is a part of our personality. It's our identity. It's our identity. When I wanted to grow in God, when I really wanted to grow in God, I would look at me. I would look at me. And I would take uh, my relationship or my interaction with someone. And I would say, now, do you treat this person right or righteous? Is your interaction with this person righteous? I'm just using this as an example. Let us say that there's a relationship. You have a relationship with somebody. It could be a spouse could be a, a relative, it could be a friend, uh, a, a helper, a co-worker, or, or a boss, or anybody. But your, your, your interaction, your, your interaction with that person is just not righteous. You don't do, it, and, and this, is, this is very, very common among spouses and parents, parent-children relationship and spousal relationships. This is very common. In, in certain, in, in, in spouses, uh, in spousal relationships um, and in, in parent, parental relationships, that parent feels that they are the parent and they are the, su they are the supreme authority. Um, even in a in a spousal relationship, the this the the husband can can take that same position. I'm the supreme authority here, and circumvent righteousness because he's the supreme authority. However, in in spousal relationships, the female the the wife can also take an unrighteous stand, in that she may the, he may be the supreme authority, but she might be the wheel of dealer or the manipulator. You know what I mean? So, because <laughs> there's some there, there there's some women that just they wear the pants but they wear them softly. <laughs> you, 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 you know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Right? But in those relationships, in spousal relationships and, and parental relationships, you have to ask yourself, did I am I am I is my deed or my deeds, my interaction with my spouse or with my children, is it righteous? Is the way that I deal with them righteous? And oftentimes, what I find in those type type of relationships, even close friend type relationships, where one is more learned than the other or whatever, there's got to be some type of preeminence there. Um, what I find is in that closeness, in those close-knit relationships, sometimes people don't feel that they have to change their interaction with that person. Like a husband may not feel like I have to be humble with my spouse or I, I, or I need to change my interaction with my spouse. I'm too domineering, I'm controlling. A, a husband may not feel like he has to do that because he's the supreme authority. But there's a difference in being the man of God in a home and being a controller. There's a big difference in that, a huge difference. And, and I heard somebody say, well, what is the difference? <laughs> I heard that in the spirit. What is the difference? When is a person a controller?
Let's use a spousal relationship. Let's use a husband and wife relationship. Because it doesn't have to be the husband that's the control. It could be the wife. There are a lot of wives that control their husbands. There are a lot of parents that control their children unrighteously. I'm talking about unrighteous control now, okay? What, what defines control? Anybody know? What, really, what do you think defines control? Bishop? When you, when you, um, when you want your way so much that you will deprive that person of something they want, like a ransom, because you didn't get your, I didn't get my way. In other words, um, you either do it my way or the highway, but it even goes further than that. If you, if you don't do it, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to deprive you I'm of something that you want from me. Correct. Right. Well, wh yeah, well, because uh, <laughs> we see that a lot with, 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 with wives. Wives do that. You know, I got a headache tonight. My stomach hurts. I'm tired. I had a long day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. But what, what defines that control, though? What defines it? I'm talking about now, I'm talking about a person exerting their, like, 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 like Bishop said, uh, um, exerting their authority or their power. Because oftentimes it's not the authority that God gave. It's power. It's more power than authority. Uh, when, they, uh, uh, us when they usurp that authority in someone's life, when you uh, usurp that authority in someone's life, what defines that as control? How's a per when is a person actually being controlled? Let's go here. Let's X out the people of the world, and let's deal with the church. When is a saint being controlled? By someone other than God. When is a saint being controlled by flesh and blood? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Now that's a very good answer. His answer was when that when that when that person has no respect for the other person's conscience toward God. And and it's amazing that you, that you, he should say that because that is the only thing that a husband does not have authority over in it, it, as it relates to his wife and children. Nobody has authority over your conscience toward God. Nobody. Nobody. If God, if, 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 if you know, Jesus made a statement, Jesus made a statement uh, in the book of St. Luke, right around the 14th chapter, somewhere in there, 11 to Somewhere around about the 14th chapter, I think he said, he said, except you hate mother, father, sister, brother, whatever, husband, wife, you can't be his disciple. N you remember that? You can't be his disciple. So what that means is that, okay, if the Lord instructs, if the Lord instructs, The Lord instructs you, tells you to do something. Or let's go here. The Lord says, sit still. Stand still. Sit right here. And your spouse or someone says, no. I want you to go. The Lord says, I want you to learn of me. Sit here and learn of me. And the spouse says, no. What do you do? Who this getting? Boy, am I on Jamaican television? Glory to God, we might need to edit this part. <laughs> what do you do? 
If you if if you're being fed by God, nurtured by God, and God give you specific instructions. God gives you a ministry. Let's say, let's go here. God gives you a ministry. And you're in, in, in Bible, let's say he gives you a ministry. And, and you're, you're working ministry. You're working ministry. And, you, and in your ministry, you've got hundreds of people that, that listen to you and that, are, that, that, that whose lives are hanging on every word that come out of your mouth. They're waiting to hear from you. Because God has given you that ministry. You're their leader. And then a spouse says, I don't want you doing that anymore. I want you to pack up. Pack up your books out of the pulpit. And go. What do you do? Because the spouse is going to say, I'm your husband. And you got to be in submission to me. What do you do? You do what with him? Oh, Lord. What do you do if the Lord say, stay here and feed my people? Feed my sheep. Give them what I put in you. If the Lord tell you that, and the spouse said, no, I don't want you doing that, what do you do? You now, you, you, now, the first thing you will pop out with is, it's better to obey God than man. That's, that's what you're saying, right? How many men say that? Be careful, Brother Bear. Be careful, uh, Pastor Leverage. Be careful. <laughs> you had your hand up, Norman? Oh, he didn't put his hand up on that one. Oh, okay. Okay, Pastor Ricky. All right, I see all these pastors with their hands up except Pastor Norman. Pastor Norman said, now, wait a minute. Now, let me think about that one. <laughs> what do you do if... You have a okay. Let me let me let me put this one to you. Let me put this one to you. I knew a lady. I knew a woman. I knew a woman that had twenty some churches. They had raised up twenty some churches, raised up people and put people over those churches. Trained ministers. Had churches. She had churches in 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 several countries and and in the United States and and the Lord gave her specific instructions and one day her spouse told her you need to step down out of that turn 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 that over to me Turn that over to me, uh, and 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 in turning it over to him meant turning the minister over to something that the minister didn't even believe in. Turning it over into tradition. So now, what was that lady supposed to do? Was that lady in sin to defy her spouse? Because the the ultimatum was. <coughs> You either do that or divorce. Find yourself in divorce court. So what was that woman supposed to do? How many male pastors say she's supposed to obey God? How many men in here say she was supposed to obey God? How many men? Well, are you sure you're not saying obey God because you're being the beneficiary of that woman's decision. <laughs> 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 but 
But this, my, my question is this, though. So, okay, now, now watch this. Watch this here. If, if that woman was righteous in obeying God and holding on to her ministry and, and fulfilling the, the, the ministry that God had given her and working in the lives of the people in the ministry continues to flourish and grow and people continue to be blessed and da 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 If that woman was righteous, then what if your wife is instructed by God to do and you oppose it? Would she be righteous to defy you? Hello? In every way? Okay. What'd you say, Pastor? Sure. Pastor Norman? Definitely. Okay. Now, now these brothers, now these, these men, you better put the camera on those men. Get that on camera. <laughs> that, 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 that brother said, these pastors said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. See, what, what, what has to happen here, what has to happen here is that God is God in every situation. He never changes. He never, ever changes. So now, why did I throw that out there? Anybody... Anybody contemplate why I threw that out there? The reason being that some of you are going to be tried in that. And, 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 and the words that you speak before God will come back before God. Some of you will be tried in that. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I am not dealing with what a wife is supposed. I'm not dealing with that. That a wife, a wife, a, a, a wife, a son of God woman that's married, glory to God, have husbands at home, should have some temperance. She, she knows. She knows how far she can go as far as even, even being out late at night, coming, coming to church and, and, and staying out all, you know, until 11 and 12 o'clock, coming home 11 and 12 o'clock at night. What married women don't, they may not be able to do that, you know, all the time. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? So there's some, some husband saying, look, I don't want my wife coming in 12 o'clock at night. You're riding on the road by yourself. I got my kids out. It's 12 o'clock at night. That's, that's just fair. And so that woman has to know how to temper herself. She has to know how to temper herself to say, you know what? Okay, uh, you know, I got to get out of here by 9 o'clock or 9.30. I got to be out of here. Y y y you know what I'm saying? So, and, and um, that, I'm not, I'm not relating to that. I'm talking about those things that are, uh, are when it comes down to your position in God. And your position in God doesn't even have to be a spouse. It could be a friend. It could be a parent. It could be a relative. It could be your own desires. Your position in God, when your position in God is challenged, because that's what it is. It's a challenge of that place in God. Because God said, I set every member in the body as it pleased me. He set us where he wanted us to function at. Come on. He put us there. And nobody has the right to, to uproot that and say, well, I don't want you to function as a pastor. I don't want you to function as an evangelist. I don't want you to function as an apostle. I, was, I had that, that same challenge. My husband challenged me on that. I don't, want, I, 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 I don't, I don't believe women should be apostles. You know? I don't believe women should be an apostle. I, 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 don't, I, 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 I feel that no woman should be a pastor. 
But when you married me, I was a pastor with 15 churches when we got married. So you didn't marry me in the blind. You, 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 exactly. You, you married a woman with 15 churches that you said you didn't have a problem with. You see? But, but now when that, when, 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 when is control control? He said, when you're not considerate of that other person's conscience toward God. Now, that's a very good answer. That's a very good answer. I think another layman's answer would be when, 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 a, when a person's actions or deeds rob another person of their identity in God. or their own identity. When you can't be yourself, when you have someone in your life that will not allow you to be yourself, to be what you are, to be what God made you, when you can't have your own thoughts and your own opinions, when you have no liberty of the spirit, that's control. That's control. How do we do that? How do people do that? How do people control people? How do you control? I want you to think about that. Many times, I, I, I read in the book of Luke, I believe it, no, Jude, it's either Jude or John. Might have been John. Where one of those writers, uh, either First John, uh, uh, th I mean Third John or, or, J or Jude, it's one of those books near the end, where uh, it was John. John was writing about this um, individual, this, this leader, that he said loved to have preeminence in the church. And he was not allowing the people in this church to come to the meeting that John had set up. He, he was casting them out of the church. If they wanted to do any, they have any, de any dealings with John, he was casting them out of the church. And John said, I'll deal with him when I get there. Um, preeminence is a driving force. People desire that preeminence. When you desire to, to have that preeminence in someone's life, that can be a driving force. And to maintain that preeminence, what, what, what happens many times is suppression. There's a spirit of suppression. Because in order to maintain preeminence in people's lives, sometimes you have to suppress the other individual. And that suppression is sometimes, it, it, it takes the form of using a person's weakness against them, using their deficiency against them. That's a wicked thing. Okay, using someone's uh, weakness against them. Um, a very good... Um, well, okay, let us say that, um, let, let me just use my, myself as an example and my relationship with, with my children, with, with, with uh, Michael. Let's, uh, let's, let's look at Michael. And now God called him as an apostle years ago. And those of you that were with me during that time, we began to we began to hear the apostle coming forth. We began to hear, and um, and even now, really now we really we used to remember we used to call him the witnessing apostle, and now we ju it's just apostle because he's coming into his own. He's coming. He's 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 matured. He's maturing rapidly, 
and, and, um, and he's coming into his own. But supposing I was intimidated by that, supposing I was intimidated with my authority and Bible teachers, <coughs> I would attempt to suppress him. And I wouldn't, and, and everything he did, everything he did in the ministry, I would make sure I had preeminence in it. He would never be anything that he did. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would never just be anything that Michael did that was very good. It would always be, I would make sure that I manipulated things in a way that it looked as if, I had the preeminence in it. I allowed him to do that. Uh, and basically, the most of the influence in it was me. You see, that's suppression. That's manipulation and suppression, you see. And, and if I was intimidated, then I'd work. I'd work that work. I'd work that work of intimidation to suppress him so that, so that you all would never see him as my equal. I need to make sure that, th and I need to make sure he never sees himself as my equal. That, that would be my goal. You're never, you're never gonna be as good as I am now. Don't, don't even think it. You know, that, and that, that's, that's, what's, that's what um, control, and because control requires suppression. Because if that person comes out if that person is allowed the liberty of the spirit, there's no telling how far God will take them, and he just may take them beyond you. Supposing Mike excels far beyond me, which is what I'm praying for. <laughs> you, you know, I want him to go. I want Mike to go, go, go. You know, I set you on, on, on this road for you to go, not for you to stay right here where I'm at. Go. Michelle, go. Tanya, go. George, go. <laughs> go. Don't sit around. Don't sit around. No, 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 no. Go. Go as far as God has allocated your measure to be. And see, if, you, if, if, if a person is intimidated with that, they got to always make you feel as if you're never going to be as good as them. I was sitting down. I was sitting uh, yesterday. Oh, here we are. I think we're at, at breakfast table or something, and I, s I said to Nesta, I said, are you going to be better than me? I said, are you going to be better than me? She said, <laughs> she, she looked around at me like, I said, I think that you could be a lot better than me and do a lot more. And she said, I know that you think that. <laughs> she said, I know you think that. I said, no, for real, I believe that. I believe you could be a lot better than me. You could do a lot more than I've done. I want that seed planted. I, that seed need to be planted. I don't, I, don't, I don't want, you see, because if I'm not able to plant that seed, then I, I want to make sure that she sees me as the, as the um, almost like a god, that she see me as the, the uh, standard or, the, or, the, or the, the, the pentacle. When you reach where I am, that you've made it. No, I need her to know that, you, that, that the God that you serve can take you far beyond where I've gone, far beyond where I've gone. That seed need to be there. That seed needs to be there in every one of you needs to be there, that you don't have, this is not it. This is not it. I'm not it. I looked around, and I, I was share, sharing with her. I said, you know, I, I'm so grateful to God. I think that's how it came up. I am so grateful to God that he didn't allow me to waste my life. It's not wasted. That I can look around and see that it did some good somewhere. That I didn't just waste my life. I, I didn't wake up at 64 years old and say, what in the world have I ever done? What do I have to show for all these years I've been in God? 
I'm so glad my life wasn't wasted, Colleen, wasn't wasted. And I began to look at you guys in the spirit, and I said, man, it's a good crop of people, and they can go so much further if they just believe. That's all I did. When I, when I, when I came into to God, when I came into the ministry, when I came into Bible teaching, I understood something one day. It's like it just came alive. I, I thought it was alive before, but it really came alive. And I, I remember saying to God, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. If your word says it, I believe it. And I always will. I said that to God. And I meant that. I believe him, Lorna. I believe God. I believe God's word. I believe God's word. I believe what God's word says. That's why I'm able to sit here tonight, because I believe God. And if you believe God, there's no telling where you'll go. You just got to believe the word. Believe God. Believe him. Believe him. Don't doubt anything the word says. Don't doubt the power of your God. Don't look at your, your, your the, 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 the situations and don't look at your, your territory spheres of influence and, 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 and all these barriers and, 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 and hindrances and stoppage points and all of that. Forget that. Look at God. Because if I looked at all of that, I wouldn't be sitting here tonight. But I looked at God and I said, God, you are limitless. He is limitless. You don't know what you'll be doing where you'll be five years from now. You could be ministering. This, you could be ministering. I could be sitting down ministering to five million people at one time. You don't know. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of people at one time. That could be my church. Five years from now, I could have a church with 100 million people in it. God is able to do that. He's able to do that. But I learned something. One of those gulfs that I had to close. One of those gulfs that I had to make sure that I closed that gap. God showed me something about ministry. He showed me what it took to get him behind you in ministry. It, he showed me that ministry is to glorify God. Healing, deliverance is to glorify God. All types of ministry, whatever ministry it is, is to glorify God. That's the purpose of ministry. And one of the gulfs that we have in ministry, and I won't, I won't, I'm going to mention this tonight because I want every pastor, every leader, everybody that wants to serve the Lord, I want you to deal with this principle right here because it's one of those subtle things that we don't, we don't often see at face value. If um, if someone came in here demon possessed and I was uh, had to stop and cast out the demon and the demon actually got cast out and the person got saved of the Holy Spirit. And I would leave here when the service is over. I would leave here thinking, boy, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Right? Should. That, that's normal. Like, Lord, thank you. 
Now, what's the other end of that? Lord, thank you for using me to cast out that devil. Oh, I thank God that you used me to cast out that devil. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like there's anything wrong with that. But everything's wrong with it. Everything's wrong with that. Because that's truly how you feel. I'm just stating how you feel, how we really feel when God uses us. We feel like, Lord, I, oh, whew, God used me to cast out that demon. Or God used me to, to bring this message. Or God used me to do this or that or whatever. And we feel, and, and, and I, I didn't see nothing wrong with that, Jackie. God said, um, excuse me. Excuse me. He said, I need you to back off. I need you to stop at being glad that I worked a miracle or that I did this thing. I need, I need that to be enough right there, not that I did it through you. I, I don't need you to be glad because I did it through you. I need you to be just glad that I did it. Because if I'm glad that he did it, it could he could have used anybody. That's got to be real, though. Exactly. That's got to be really how you feel. You got to be glad that somebody, that God used somebody to cast that demon out. And that person is free. Not that God did it through you. And I was so guilty of that because I was glad God was using me. I was just glad. Man, I was just glad. Oh, Jesus, I'm glad. Now, I'm just being honest. That's, and that's the way most ministers feel. And God said, that's a gulf. That's a gulf that you're falling in every time. Every time. You're, you're falling into that gulf, and I want you to close that gulf. Stop right there. Just back up and just be glad that I'm working. Be glad the person is delivered. Just be glad for that. Because if you can stay right there, then it didn't matter who I use. Are you hearing God? Mm -hmm. nah, 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 nah. These are some of the things that ministers got to learn. Because you know what it is? It's spiritual character. It's godly character. It's the character of the spirit. The Holy Spirit honors the Father. He bears witness of the deeds of the Father. He's a witness. That's what he is. He's a witness of the deeds of the Father, not of man. He's a witness. And so we ought to be, if we're one with him, it's just sufficient that God moves. It's, that's sufficient enough. And now what happened is, you see what happened? We took flesh out of it. When we take the me out, flesh is out. Are you understanding that now? There's no flesh now. We didn't give a place to the flesh. It's tight, but it's right, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. We didn't give a place. We took away that provision for flesh. We took away that place, that preeminence for flesh. We took it away when we stopped right there at being just glad for God moving. Take me out of it, no flesh is there. That's how... That's when God says, okay, I can work with this. I can work with this person because this person is not touching my glory. This person just wants me to be magnified. Just, just me to be magnified. And that was my downfall. That was my down I didn't realize how, how serious that was. You know, I know it's serious, but God just, just like, he just like confronted me. He just like. Doing what that's, I told you I had a visitation when I was writing that study guide. God said, hmm, excuse me. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. See, we're all growing in this. We're all growing. God refining. He's refining us. Hallelujah. And he's not leaving the head out. He's refining me just like he's refining you. Glory to God. And anything that I'm short in, God going to fix it. 
He going to tell me, baby, uh-uh, you coming short in that. Just like he telling you, he's going to tell me too. Yeah, they, they, no, 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 that's a shortness there. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Quick comment before I've done it. Mm -hmm. That is so real. Uh, when you said it, I was reflecting on the little I, I, I saw of Kathleen Coleman's ministry. Mm -hmm. She always, she never, she, al she was just glad that God did yes. what he did. And yes. it was such a difference. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Just she was just always honored. She honored the Holy Ghost. She honored His presence, and that's what God is esteeming me to do. He's teaching me how to do that. To 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 to, to really see, because I I'm not a faker. I, I'm not I'm not a faker. I don't fake things, you know. And 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 I. I I, I want my honoring of the Holy Spirit to be real, not a little bunch of words. I want it to be real. I want I want that I want to know when that because see I'm 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 like this. You can get into a service and you can you can say all, all that stuff. The Holy Ghost is here and, and all that. Well when the Holy Ghost come in, things supposed to happen. If the Holy Ghost is really here, then somebody ought to be getting saved or healed or delivered or something ought to be going on if the Holy Spirit is really here. You know, even if people are just being edified through the word, the Holy Spirit is working. But but to, to say the Holy Ghost is here and just reach out and you can do this and da 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 I need to know he's there. Because I I remember I remember when I was studying studying scripture years ago when I was very young and God showed me something that I never forgot. And that's why I don't like all that. I don't like to be in those, those meetings where people yelling and screaming, trying to bring the presence, you know, trying to shake the presence of God in people and yelling and screaming, and God is here, and, yeah, and nothing is going on that's godly. That hype. I, 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 don't, I can't, I don't deal with that. But I remember the Lord showed me in the scriptures where there was an angel of his presence. And that's what I wait on. And I remember once asking God, show me the angel of your presence. I want to be in services where I s either see the angel of God's presence or I know he's there. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I know I'm talking, and I'll, I have the Holy Ghost, but I'm talking about feel the movement of the Holy Spirit. I don't want, glory to God, to be, you know, like folks blowing on folks and they just falling out, but nothing changed. They get up the same. I don't I wave their hand and people just falling out because they're on TV, glory to God, and, 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 and get up and, and nothing changes. No. I, I want the Holy Spirit to really be present. And that and God is refining. He's fine tuning. He's fine tuning us so that that can happen. Yes, yes, Pastor. I think you gave you a very significant key. And I really heard God because we get excited to say, Boy, the Lord used me today and I give him the glory and we I'm sorry, I could I think the Lord just gave you a very significant key for us moving ahead. Because we're all getting the thing where we said, okay, the Lord used me and we're happy. And we give him the glory and we're sincere in our hearts. Right. But when you said a while ago that we didn't have to add through me, then what that will do is make, it make us just be happy for whoever he uses. Right. Right. Whichever ministry he uses, right. whichever person he uses, if he uses a child, if he uses right. a donkey, we just know that that's him. Yes, him. So that will take the focus from us. Right. So I really want to thank you. I really heard God. I'm happy Amen. for that. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, like she said, we'll just be glad. We'll just be glad that God is moving. Yes, sir. Doc, I'm glad you used the illustration. Just before you used the illustration, I was thinking of some things that you said about us veterans who hang around and that we hang around 
And just before you said that, my heart went to the place that I did not hang around. I was looking for somewhere to go to leave this ministry. Mm -hmm. But it was the Holy Ghost that kept me. Yes. It wasn't I kept me hanging around. Right. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Holy Ghost kept you right here. Couldn't leave you. See, see, what you don't understand is that some of y'all, I just threw a leash around your neck. You didn't realize that you was on a leash. <laughs> and I remember praying and saying, God, hold them. Hold them till I get there. Hold them. I knew you were on the way out. But I said, God, just hold them. Don't, don't, don't let him leave. Don't, don't let him leave. Glory to God. But you know what, though? I, you know the confidence that I have, the confidence that I have. And, and, I, and this is not arrogance, I don't think. It's not pride and not arrogance. It's just confidence. I believe when I, when I meet up with a, a Ricky, a Don, a Lorna, a, some of you, there's some of you whose hearts are toward God. And no matter what happens, the hardships, the, the trials that, 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 that come to sweep you guys out and push you out, no matter how, how close you are to stepping out that door, if you got, you can have one foot out that door and one foot in. I have such confidence in the power of the word in your life. And I knew, and I said to God, I said, God, God said, go and strengthen my people. God knew I wasn't bringing nothing but the word of God. That's what it takes to strengthen God's people. And see, when that, and, you, and I just, I said, now, now, Lord, if you let me stand flat-footed and teach the word, it'll retrieve your people. It'll retrieve your people. It'll retrieve their hearts. It'll bring their hearts back in line with the word of God. I said, if you just let me stand flat-footed and teach it, you just hold them till I get there. I'll teach the word. Because I'm not intimidated by, by anything, the devil and nobody else when it comes to teaching the word. And I don't back down from, from preaching the word. If, if you don't want me to preach the word, you just got to take my life because I'm going to teach the word as long as there's breath in me. Glory to God. And so God knew that I would come here and stand flat-footed and teach the word. What did I do since I've been here? I, November 29th will be two years. I just stood flat-footed and teach the word. And it retrieved the hearts of the people and it began to, 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 to stir up that thing that was in you, that thing that, and it brought the hope back. It, it, brought, it, br it brought back your, your confidence in apostolic order. It just, it, it, and, and it let you know that you, what, what it ought to let you know is that God is mindful of you, that God loves you, and God say, well, okay, I'll stop everything over there in America and bring it right here. Glory to God. I'll set it right here in front of you. It'll be 10 feet from you. Glory to God. Will you hear it? Will you hear it? That's what God is. God has blessed Jamaica to have the same type of, of visitation from the apostolic mantle that Fort Lauderdale had. Fort Lauderdale had this. They had it for a long time. They had this. And now Jamaica has this. And the fact that Jamaica, God has said Jamaica is the prototype, that's big. That's really big. And I don't think you guys realize yet how big that is. But that's huge. The prototype for what he was going to do in the world. That's what he said to me. And see, that's what I hold on to. I hold on to that. Nobody can take that from me. And I'm watching God now put things in place. I'm watching God put things in place. Um, I'm watching him put things in place that we, 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 we never, we, we couldn't put in place in the States. We, we never, they never came to fruition. They, they, we put, put some stuff in place, but they never came to fruition. But I'm watching God now remodel. Just take the vision, and he's remodeling it and sticking those things in place, and I'm going like, whoa. So I'm just following the lead of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. 
pa pass him the mic, please. Someone has the mic. with where you um, where you've been ministering I just want to read this scripture um, which really takes the f keeps the focus on God for where two or three are gathered together in my name mm -hmm. there am I in the midst of them mm -hmm. that's all I wanted to read <laughs> where two or three <laughs> I know there are. Um, I know the context is that is Jesus judging in the midst of the church, but I also know that his being in the midst is is uh, must be must carry great great significance, significance yes. and absolute weight. Yes. And I think that what happens is we're not always gathered in His name. We're not always gathered in His name and. And and um, we don't acknowledge him. We don't acknowledge him the way he needs to be acknowledged. That's that's a that's a, a failure of the church, of us too. Um, personally, we have not acknowledged him the way he wants to be acknowledged. And and he and I are talking about that. The Lord is talking about that because. The prophet has said something when I first came. I never forget this, and I keep going back to it. She said, the church does not, the, the leaders don't know what church really is. And that's what God is refining now. He's, he's, de he's redefining what church is. And, and that is a part of it, Christ being in the midst, where, where we're gathered together. Christ is in the midst. We're gathered together in his name. So much goes on. Let me tell you something. So much goes on in the in this uh, assembly, the general assembly, of in, in 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 churches. So much goes on that is not Christ. And and all of that stuff that's going on that's not Christ. When you got when you got um, leadership that's not Christ, and and all of that stuff that's going on that's not Christ. You don't you 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 you. Gathering in his name is not the principle there. That's not a gathering in the name of Christ. In in the name when 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 we're gathered in the name of Christ, Christ has preeminence. He has the preeminence. Are you, are you hearing God? And so uh, uh, we have missed that because a lot of stuff has gone on in the church that's just not Christ. This is not Christ, and especially even the, even the format of church, the way we do church sometimes, glory to God, we have these rituals. A lot of church has this ritualistic, we got the, we, you know, we do this, 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 got, the, 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 you know. Some churches don't give any, any avenue for the Holy Spirit to move. Don't give any, any, any avenue for the, it's just a program, exactly, just a program. So we, God is defining that, he's redefining it, and he is, he is teaching us, because he and I are talking about that. What is really Christ? What is really Christ in the church? What is Christ in the church? All right. Any other questions? Well, praise the Lord. Amen. God, is, God is, is, is ministering to us saints, and, and those of you that are watching by way of television, Lord God, I hope that you've learned something tonight. This has been uh, really stimulating, I hope. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to be back here again um, Friday. We'll be back here. We're here every Wednesday and Friday night just discussing the word of God. We're, we're toning it down a little bit. Glory to God, so that we can get the feedback. And if you have, if you if you want to be a part of these discussions, you can always call us here at the sanctuary. At um, we're in Jamaica, nine six eight one seven zero three. Yes, put the uh, um, they're going to put the the uh, information up on the screen. Or if you're in the states, there's another number that you can call. They'll put it up on the screen. Or go to Facebook, BTBN, BTBN TV. That's BTBN TV. Or 
our Twitter account. Hit us on Twitter or Facebook. And if you have any questions, glory to God, and we'll answer those questions in our next session. This is Dr. Banks saying we love you, and we'll see you next time. It's okay, okay, just pick up some more. Praise the Lord.